I want to speak to you though about today is um, public speaking. And when I first introduced this to my kids, this was pretty much the expression that I got. And this is Serena, much smaller than when I told her she was going to do public speaking, but that expression was the same one on her face when I said, hey, we're gonna do this thing. And Nathaniel said, okay, I'll give it a try. He was about 14 and Serena said, I do not wanna do this and you can't make me. Well, here she is in her first year. <laughs> was that their first tournament? I got her to do it. And they discovered something really awesome at their first tournament experience, and that was that they loved public speaking. And their younger siblings, Sophia and Michael, joined them, so this is kind of our bookend moment where we have our very first tournament ever, and then one of our recent tournaments from this past spring. And this is something that we have really delved into as a family. And really, the why of that is because we believe that communication is integral for success. And you all are aware, and it's not just our kids, it's us too, we are picking up our phones way more often for entertainment, for friendship building, for just about everything, and communication in its true form is really becoming a lost art, and I really see that that's a tragedy. And I don't wanna see it destroyed and it damaged beyond repair, and so as a family, we have set about pursuing what it looks like to really delve into true and deep and vital communication. So we're gonna talk about the what, the why, and the how of getting involved with public speaking. And I'm gonna first answer the question, what is STOA? STOA is our parent and national speech and debate organization, and there are local chapters all over the United States. So each local club has an opportunity to do things a little bit differently, kind of based on personality of the director or the needs of the students, but we are under a parent organization that comes up with just the policies that we're following, the um, events that we do, and also the tournaments. So the tournaments are kind of a fun way to practice what they've been learning in a competitive setting, and um, we find that that kind of while not really real life preparation, is good encouragement to get them to practice what we're training them to do and hopefully prepare them a little bit for a real life setting. So we get asked a lot, is STOA an acronym? And it is not, and I'm pretty sure all of you know what a STOA is and just have never heard of that word before. And it is actually a structure from the ancient Greek civilization where they built this with the idea to have a place where people could come and exchange ideas and communicate what they were learning and also listen to what other people were learning. So STOA adopted their name with that same idea in mind to bring kids together, to teach them how to communicate their ideas, but also how to listen to others and receive feedback for their ideas and to hear and respond to other people's ideas in an environment that was welcoming. So that is the heart behind what STOA is and also um, really to train kids to speak boldly in an era where following the crowd or our identity is in crisis, really giving them an opportunity to learn that they have a voice and then train them how to use it in a way that they can speak boldly for what they believe to be is true and right. So I'm gonna go through a little bit. Deborah wanted me to highlight kind of what our speech events are and what we do to give you a picture of what your kids would be doing. So STOA has created three main speech events, the platform speeches, interpretive speeches, and limited prep speeches. So the platform are by far my favorite. They are researched, written, and memorized in advance. They're about 10 minutes long. And really what I absolutely love about the platform speeches is that as coaches, we help the students tap into something that they are passionate about, that they are interested in, and then we do research with them, we do our writing, and so they're training on something that they're interested in, and then we give them the opportunity to share what they're interested in in a very meaningful way and show them how to have impact with their audience. So I love this because you're gonna hear a variety of topics and you can pretty much do anything. So I'm gonna share a little bit more about topics in a moment. So platforms are broken down into three subcategories. Original oratory, persuasive and expository. Original oratory is 
in, um, for conveying information. So you're gonna see pretty much everything in here. Persuasive is just that, is to be able to persuade your audience. And this is really fun to hear kids learning to become kind of a professional in a topic and to convey it in such a way that they are convincing their audience to understand what they're, where they're coming from and to hopefully even convince them that this is a good new thought or a good new way to do something. So that's really fun. Expository of the three is my favorite because you get to use props. And this allows the students a huge amount of creativity. So you'll see sometimes a PowerPoint like what I'm doing, but more often than not, you see the kids making things, making their poster boards and objects, and it's amazing what they do. And so, a little story about this. My daughter, Sophia, loves expositories, just like I do. And I usually have my kids, at the end of one school year, begin to think about what they want to do for the next school year. So, last spring, so that would have been spring 2018, we had finished with our tournaments for that year, and I said, so, do you have any ideas or thoughts of things you would like to do for this next year? And she said, yeah. I want to do an expository on blood. And I thought, okay, that's a little nasty. A lot of people faint, you know, at the sight of blood. Are you sure you want to do that? And she said, yeah, and do you think, like, I could do my blood type or, you know, draw blood or something? You know, I don't think that we're going to be able to do that. But I didn't want to tell her I didn't think it was a very good idea. So instead I said, why don't we get some books from the library? And you can do some research and see if you can do this topic. All the while I'm thinking, this is not gonna fly. So she spent the summer checking books out from the library. We had books on the circulatory system, we had books on blood transfusions, we had books on doctors, all throughout the ages with all sorts of discoveries. And as she began reading, I was noticing that she was becoming engrossed in all of the information and the research she was doing. And by the end of the summer, she had a great angle on what she wanted to talk about and we formulated points, we created impact because just because something interests you doesn't mean it's going to interest your audience. So we teach our students, how can you connect with somebody who might not naturally be inclined to enjoy what you're talking about? So we did that and then we spent months and weeks creating all kinds of things for her props and her objects that she was going to use. And what I thought was a bit of a sketchy idea at the beginning turned out to be literally an award winner as for all four tournaments that she participated in, she won either first or second place. And I was so proud of her and impressed by this. The best part was at the end of the year, she said, you know, mom, when I first suggested this topic to you, I really just wanted to shock and gross people out by doing this speech. <laughs> I learned that blood really is awesome for what it does for us and that life is in the blood and I loved giving this speech every time I gave it and sharing what I had learned with everybody else and that passion and that love she had for it is what showed and what created winning the, these tournaments. So it was exciting to see that culmination and to work with her on what I thought could not happen and then see it happen and see her loving doing that. So it was a whole year of a lot of research and growing and learning and the kids are always the ones that learn more than their audience because they're the ones investing all of that time. Um, the next are interpretive speeches which are really fun for the budding thespians because it gives them an opportunity to take a piece of literature which can be a book, it can be a play and they have to cut it down to size because they only have about 10 minutes and they have to pull out plot, they have to pull out impact, they have to pull out theme and characterization, and then they do it themselves. So if you have three or four characters in this piece, they have to portray them all in a believable fashion with voices and acting. They don't have props, they don't have costumes, they don't have setting and scene behind them. So it's a very, very good challenge for them to do that, and it's very entertaining. I think though beyond the entertainment value, um, what I enjoy about this, and I'm a I'm an English person, so reading, writing, and speaking is, are my passions as well. But I love that when a ki the kids enter a story and learn these characters and learn this plot and learn the theme and the meaning, they are now entering into somebody else's emotions, somebody else's ideas, somebody else's problems, somebody else's successes, and it begins to create within them 
a picture of the larger world around them that's not just them. And we know that oftentimes kids are very focused here and it's an opportunity to begin teaching them to be focused outward and to see what other people are going through and to experience empathy. So they're very, very powerful. Um, they are broken up into four subcategories. You can see those here, dramatic, humorous, open, and duo. Um, duo is the only one where you have two kids that are doing it together. And it's kind of fun. It's, it's a very choreographed dance almost because they can't touch each other and they can't have eye contact. So just little rules that make it a little bit more interesting and a little bit different than if you were seeing something acted out on the stage. So these are a lot of fun and oftentimes kids have their favorite and as a coach I'm always kind of trying to say, you know what, you've done three dramatic interps, how about a humorous one, let's see what we can do with that and they don't always like that but that's okay. Limited prep is just what it sounds like, you have limited prep and this is the one that probably strikes fear into most hearts, including ours. I was reading um, the book Talks with Ted by Carmen Grillo, and he, along with many other sources, report that public speaking is one of the most terrifying events that most people uh, feel that way about it, and this one even more so, because what is worse than standing up and receiving a topic that you know nothing or very little about or just have um, don't have a speech written, but maybe just some points of the speech, and then having to speak for a certain amount of time on it in a way that makes sense, is logical, and conveys meaning and connection with your audience. So, this is also broken into categories, and impromptu is the one that Serena told me, fine, if you're going to make me do this speech thing, I'll do it, but I am never, ever going to do impromptu. Well, that first tournament, I promptly signed her up for impromptu because she is my quick on the draw kid and I knew with practice that she could do it. And guess who is the impromptu queen? Um, Serena, and this is the limited prep speaking is her baby and what she did for four years and was very good at. And I'm so glad <laughs> I didn't listen to her when she told me she would never ever do it. So this one is super fun because you have topics in envelopes, objects in bags, you can't see them, you pull it out and you have two minutes to look at this object. You get to actually pull out three and choose one of them. Two minutes to formulate a speech with points that make sense and that is meaningful and not just, oh, the three reasons I like ice cream are, this is wonderful training, it's the most real to life speech because it teaches them that when somebody presents them with a question or an opportunity, they start to learn how to think quickly to formulate a response in a way that makes sense and is communicated well. So I love this event. Um, the next one, it was my son, Nathaniel's very, very favorite because this is about current events. It involves every week spending a great amount of time reading the newspaper, reading um, news articles online. You get to put them in a database and set them all aside and then at tournament time, you're given your actual topics and you better hope you've done your homework and created a nice big database to pull from because you have 30 minutes to pull the articles that you've read before and to formulate a speech. And in this one, kind of one of the caveats is you have to assume that your audience does not know about this new political um, situation that happened or what the president did here or what's happening in Guatemala right now. And you have to explain it in such a way that everybody knows what you're talking about and then you have to take a stand on the issue and give support for that. Excellent, excellent training. And I learned a lot too because I'm not a very news savvy person, unfortunately. Um, Mars Hill is kind of a unique one based on media and culture where they have a list of books, songs, movies, plays that are um, current and actually um, from the past as well that they learn about and then create a theme from and then learn how to tie to biblical um, concepts and principles to start conversations with people. So it's a unique one. Um, apologetics, they have 100 questions that they have to deal with and apologetics is basically a defense of the Christian faith. So they have to answer throughout the year 100 questions and they can do research ahead of time but they can't take a speech with them into the room. So they don't know what question they're going to pick and they have to be prepared for them all. So it's a real, honestly some of these scare me and the kids do really well. They're much braver than I am. Um, 
We also offer debate. STOA has three forms of debate, team policy, Lincoln, Doug Lincoln Douglas, and parliamentary. Team policy is two-on-two -two and policy-based. So this is where you see a lot of political things, a lot of government issues. Um, they have a sa the same resolution all year long, which allows them to write briefs ahead of time, but they don't write rebuttals ahead of time because they don't know what the other team is going to throw at them, but they at least are allowed some semblance of preparation. So coming up for the 2020 year, um, the United States government should substantially reform its banking, finance, and or monetary policy is what these kids are going to do their research on. And I'm telling you, these kids have these huge boxes on wheels with all of their evidence, with all of their cases, and I love to see what they're learning and the time that they're spending to understand what's happening in the world around us. Lincoln Douglas is my favorite. This is a one-on-one -on -one debate and it's value-based instead of policy-based. So you'll see here a lot more ethical resolutions, philosophical resolutions. It's not about evidence and proof. You need to support based on values. So I like that angle a lot. The new resolution for this year, it's also the same all year long, is culture ought to value assimilation over multiculturalism. So I think we're gonna see some interesting, um, interesting cases. One of the things that is really neat about both of these debates is that the students are required to prepare an affirmative case and a negative case because in a tournament setting, they don't know which side they're gonna be on. So they have to be prepared to support both sides. So it's not about which issue they like best, it's going to be the issue from both sides. So that's excellent training. The last one is parliamentary debate. Two on two, limited preparation. It's styled after the British Parliament. And these are different resolutions for every round. And debate has a minimum of six rounds per tournament. So they get their topic, which can be policy, value, or something very random, humorous, cultural. And they have about 15 minutes to work with their partner to put something together and then head into the debate. So all really wonderful training to teach kids to think on their feet and to communicate um, their ideas and always support. We're really big, support, support, support. So why should we do this? I'm gonna go back to that the communication is integral for success. And my husband and I thought about this when our kids were really small, that no matter what they end up doing after they graduate from high school, communication is going to be beneficial for them. And learning how to think on their feet, learning how to communicate in a way that people understand and in a way that people can connect with them is so, so crucial. And so we felt like, you know, this is a great investment, even if they don't know what they want to do. This is not just about them having to be a public speaker. They can be a mom and a dad. They can be an engineer. They can work at McDonald's. Whatever that ends up being, communication is going to help them. Our desire, um, and this is more of my own individual clubs, but I would say for STOA as well, our desire is to prepare students to learn and exercise analytical and oratorical skills addressing life issues from a biblical worldview in a manner that glorifies God. And there are a lot of benefits that your kids would receive from this. So you've got personal development and communication skills, research and logical analysis, how to give and receive constructive feedback, and that's a big one because all of us want to give feedback, but no one likes receiving it. So not only do they receive feedback from coaches and from their peer students, but in a tournament situation, they're receiving feedback from the volunteer judges and learning how to take that learning to say, what of this feedback is going to help me and what is not going to help me? So there's a lot of discernment and training that goes into that. Develop appreciation for edifying literature. I'm a huge, huge fan of really good literature, so our kids are only allowed to do um, not classic literature, but things that are really well written, and so we hope that they develop an appreciation for those things. Um, also, development of Christian character through hard work, humility, and honoring others. How to dress and act in a professional manner. You noticed my kids were in business suits. That is the required dress code. They are so adorable, and I always want to tell them on their ballots, and I'm judging, you're just so cute, you're 12 year old in the suit with a tie, and I have not said that. My, my kids have coached me well to never say that on anybody's ballot. Um, also to develop friendships, in the club setting especially, we're developing community, we're getting to know each other, we're training together, 
and then we're competing together and we also have the opportunity to develop friendships with clubs from our state and then other clubs from all around the nation which is really fun to go to nationals at the end of the year and see so and so you met when they came and visited from Arkansas to one of our tournaments and it just provides some neat um, relationship experiences. So they're also going to pick up some skills as well as benefits and we've talked about some of these throughout but um, oratory, the use of gestures, we really work with them on trying to be natural and not just you know, that kind of thing. Um, controlling their voice, using wonderful vocabulary, speaking notes and pitches and being able to um, have inflection, and using humor, which is actually a skill and not natural to most people, and developing a relationship with the audience, which is probably one of the most difficult things of all that um, new students really struggle with, but by the time you're seeing seniors in high school, uh, you're seeing a lot, of, a lot of that really well. So why competitive speech and debate? Um, our club has adopted this piece of wisdom from Proverbs as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. And then we also have a motto that's we do not train to compete, but we compete to train. So how did we get involved? I'm glad you asked. So you would want to join a club. And we have a lot here in the state, two in Colorado Springs, so you do need to be eligible according to stoausa.org, which is our parent organization. And they go through, um, homeschool is pretty complicated these days with all the enrichment classes and um, cottage schools you can do, so they do have eligibility requirements. We do have um, expectations and codes of conduct, which can vary a little bit from club to club because we do have that authority to do things a little bit differently within each club. We have registration forms to fill out, club fees, which also differ based on which clubs you join. We want the kids to be on time, to come prepared, to be ready to participate, and be willing to try new things to learn and grow. I'm going to be really good about encouraging them to be out of their comfort zone and to, you know, I want to meet them where they're at and then help them take that next step up. We are um, really fortunate to have two clubs here in Colorado Springs. Ours is SWORD. Um, we meet on Tuesdays beginning after Labor Day, and my contact information is over here. Um, we also have another club, Resolve, which meets on Thursdays, and Colleen's information is there too. So we actually have been a part of both clubs over the years. My older kids did Resolve, and my younger kids and I are doing SWORD. And both are wonderful clubs. We are sister clubs and do, do some things together. Just to kind of give you a little bit of a briefing on the different ones, our club is intentionally a small club. My heart is really to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching and training and also relationship building. It's a lot easier to get to know all of the kids and really speak into their lives when there aren't a hundred of them. And so we just do have that heart in our club. Um, but being a smaller club, we don't offer all of the debates. So that's kind of, there's you know pros and cons to both. Resolve is a pretty big club, anywhere from 40 to 60 kids, depending on their year. But they are able to offer all three debate forms. So they would have not um, as much ability to do the one-on-one -on -one coaching that we like to do in SWORD, but they have other abilities due to their size. So both of them are wonderful. Um, on the bottom, I have two website addresses for you. The first one is stoausa.org. That's the parent organization. The second one, Rocky Mountain Stoa, is just the conglomeration of all of the clubs that are here in Colorado. We kind of work together on a lot of things, and if you go to that website, you'll have an opportunity to see not just about um, the Colorado Springs clubs, but you can also look at um, what's in Denver. There are several up in that area, and we're all very friendly with each other. The kids, usually it's friendly competition, but sometimes <laughs> we, we try to keep it um, in hand. So that's kind of just everything in a nutshell about speech. Um, the last thing I want to just highlight is that um, Stoa's heart and then our heart as local coaches is really character development and we place that before winning. So I don't um, encourage kids to write the speeches that are going to get the big win or to have the debate case that's going to get the big win. We're really working on character first and how are they treating each other? Um, what kinds of speeches are they wanting to do and where's their heart at? And then we hope that they do well, but not everybody is going to win, and that requires character development as well to handle wins as well as losses. 
So anyway, if you have questions for me afterwards, please let me know and um, I'm happy to give you my contact information after too if you did not have a chance to write it down. Thank you very much. Thank you.